based on the Hollywood Reporter, missed opportunity for Survivor Game Changers as transgender castaway is outed at Tribal Council. One of the most emotional Tribal Councils in Survivor history included emotional discussion, but Jeff Probst and company had to do better. I can't really write a recap of tonight's Survivor. It was 40 minutes of a dull episode of Survivor, followed by 20 minutes of disturbing, powerful, meaningful, and yet probably mismanaged television that shouldn't be discussed as a twist in a reality competition show. Every week, I do recaps of Survivor and I speculate wildly on motivations and emotions based on CBS editing. I treat people as good or bad, and I feel okay doing it, because I feel like I'm writing about real people within the characters they chose to play on a TV show, and the way they were edited, and I don't feel bad that the characters they're playing have these people's real names, because I feel like when I write about them in a survivor context, that's not the same as an ad hominem insult of the castaways as humans. Even when I did pre-season and post-elimination interviews with contestants, I didn't pretend I knew them. Wednesday's Survivor made a big mess of the idea that things that happen in the game aren't also things that impact these contestants in the real world. We can get this out of the way, Jeff Arner was getting voted out on Survivor Game Changers regardless of anything he did or said at Tribal Council. He was getting voted out because he was an alliance of one and alliances of one get voted out. He was also getting voted out because his initial attempts to change his position failed, because he's not a good survivor player and hasn't been a good survivor player on three occasions now. Nobody was going to talk about Jeff as a survivor player if he'd just been voted out, and nobody will talk about him as a survivor player now after an episode that ended with Probst saying, there's no question who's going home tonight, right? Everybody agreed, and so Probst pointed at Varner and declared, we don't need to vote, just grab your torch. What Varner did to get himself in that position was a life blunder, not a survivor blunder. The survivor blunders came earlier and aren't interesting. Zeke's not being truthful. There's something about Zeke that nobody knows, Varner told Andrea earlier in the episode. We didn't know what he meant, and I doubt anybody could have even imagined, but pushed into a corner at Tribal Council, Varner felt he had no choice but to go dirty. And he went dirtier than we've ever seen on Survivor. There is deception here, Varner announced at Tribal, before asking Zeke why he hadn't told everybody else that he was trans. The reaction was quick, decisive, and, to everybody's credit, directed exclusively at Varner. You did then have to do that, Andrea told Varner, in immediate ears. Nobody has the right to out anybody, Ty protested. Two seasons I've played Survivor, I told nobody, Zeke said and Varner, still briefly standing by his choice, insisted that outing somebody he had been friends with was okay because it reveals the ability to deceive. It's here that I'll just see to Nick Adams, director of GLAA's transgender media program, who said in a statement. After the show, Zeke Smith and transgender people like him are not deceiving anyone by being their authentic selves, and it is dangerous and unacceptable to out a transgender person. It is heartening, however, to see the strong support for Zeke from the other people in his tribe. Moments like this prove that when people from all walks of life get to know a transgender person, they accept us for who we are. To me, that says it all. It's strange or unlikely or wildly coincidental that Wednesday's episodic theme and immunity challenge puzzle answer was metamorphosis, which Zeke smartly nodded to when he'd regained some composure. He announced, I am a changed, stronger better man today. Indeed, Zeke's strength in this moment is what people will remember. Strength in the moment of nationally televised ugliness, that I sure can't fathom. It never dawned on me that no one knew. So I'm just devastated, Varner said, as he gradually began to realize what he did.
It's rationalizing. You can't say that it never dawned on you that no one knew when you used the information as proof of deception. But I don't doubt that as Jeff Varner, the person, stepped outside of Jeff Varner, useless survivor contestant, in that moment, he really was devastated. I don't want to get into his motivations. I don't want to tear Varner to pieces. I also can't say the conversation that followed was worth it or privacy supersedes the conversation because I don't think there is a clear answer. If Zeke wanted to be known as a smart, funny, openly gay survivor contestant who worshipped Oklahoma football and loved making big moves in the game and probably erred on the side of overplaying but did so in a way that I liked watching, that's who Zeke is to me but as Adam said, giving people who haven't had the opportunity to meet or see or get to know a transgender person this public face is valuable even if an awful thing set it in motion. What Varner did was so crappy. He shouldn't get to have good things come from it, but Zeke seems like such a truly likable guy that he doesn't deserve to have bad things come from just wanting to play a game he loves, and Zeke's needs and desires to make something worthwhile from it trump anything else. Barner took away Zeke's choice in how he wanted to define himself, but Zeke did the best he could in the moment, and I assume he'll make the best of it now. I wish Survivor could have made something better from it. The powerful displays of love and acceptance for Zeke at the Tribal Council were valuable and even if Sarah made the moment a bit too much about her, she expressed a perspective that was illuminating and important. In an episode that was otherwise so unremarkable though, I don't understand how probes and the Survivor producers didn't find a way to end the Tribal Council with 10 minutes left and then pull back from the game and acknowledge some things. There had to be some conversation about why this was airing at all. The answer, presumably, relates to a combination of it's a TV show, and they couldn't just skip over what happened without explaining why there was no vote, but somebody still went home and Zeke and the producers had a conversation about what he was prepared to have air on television. The first part doesn't make a lick of difference to me I've been confused by survivor editing before and they could have left us confused again if they collectively decided that was what was right. The second part may not make a difference to the producers because they own this footage and they don't, I'm guessing, have a legal requirement to ask Zeke what they could or couldn't show. But I still assume a conversation was had, and even if Zeke and Varner and Probe stall go into detail in various interviews over the next couple months, that's not the same as putting it in the episode where it belonged. Since Probe's talk show hosting dreams were thwarted by American disinterest, you've sensed him trying to be a tribal council opera at times. Why not do a five-minute film conversation with Probe Stan Zeke in a comfortable setting discussing the moment from a distance, delving into the opportunities they now see for advancing the cause of understanding, and how Zeke's feelings have shifted and evolved and mellowed since that night. Instead, what should be an impactful back and forth about the limitations and possibilities of reality TV to instigate certain conversations is going to get squished into the rowdy reunion show that tends to be exactly the wrong setting for anything of meaning that's treating this as survivor this needed to be treated as bigger than survivor there should have been websites and hotlines presented in cheerings Somebody associated with Survivor should have made sure that the episode ended by telling people where they can get more information and where this conversation can continue. Nothing that happened in the first 40 minutes of the episode was so important it couldn't have been cut out so that the episode could have ended the right way, rather than with Varner being sad about going home. I know that's how every episode of Survivor ends, with the closing credits confessional, but this was exactly the sort of episode that deserved to be treated as one in 500. It was an awful thing that happened, it was a significant conversation that followed, and it was a lapsed opportunity or responsibility from Survivor and CBS to make sure to write by the situation. 
based on People TV Watch, Survivor Zeke Smith on Jeff Varner outing him as transgender on TV, I really struggle with forgiving him. Zeke Smith has spent eight months figuring out how to forgive Jeff Varner for outing him as transgender on Wednesday as shocking and emotional episode of Survivor. It has tough with Varner, says Smith, who was interviewed exclusively for the current issue of People. I don't think he hates trans people. I just think he has a lot of misconceptions about trans people. I think, if he wants to be an ally to trans people, he has a long way to go. Varner, 50, outed Smith, 29, during a tribal council in attempts to paint the Brooklyn-based asset manager as deceitful and therefore worthy of being voted out. I think you see the stacked accused a lot by politicians to pass these so-called bathroom bills and I don't think it is a coincidence that he is from North Carolina where the most dangerous of these bathroom bills was passed, says Smith. I think the hardest part is that if he was just some ignorant bigot, you could just write him off, but he is not, Smith says of Varner, who is gay. He knows better. I think, because he is gay, people give his words a little more weight, and I don't know if he believes what he said, but he definitely hoped others would. But Smith is extremely pleased that his tribe mates quickly admonished Varner for his actions. Trans people are a highly vulnerable population. We make easy targets. We're attacked a lot and I expected a lot more from Varner, says Smith. But I think it is so great that you see has hateful tactics rebuffed with such amazing love and from such a diverse group that responds to him. After being ousted by his tribe on Wednesday's episode, Varner approaches Smith and pulls him in for a hug. After viewing the footage, Smith admits it was a hard moment to watch. It was hard to see me hug him, that night, and tell him that it was going to be okay, says Smith. But it was important for me to show that he had not cowed me, that whatever shots he meant to take at me, he missed, that I was the stronger man, and he was the one weeping. In the months since that tribal council, Smith says he has spent a lot of time processing how he feels about Varner. In the moment, it felt like the right thing to do was accept his apology and say that we'd find a way to work it out, but I don't really I really struggle with forgiving him every day, says Smith. Ive had to think a lot about what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is not forgetting what happened. It does not excusing what happened. I don't even think forgiveness means I have to be his friend, and I don't think I ever will be his friend. But I think forgiveness is about hope hope that he understands why what he did was wrong, hope that he doesn't ever do something like this again, and hope that whatever compelled him to give in to his worst instincts in a dark moment is resolved for him, he continues. I do wish him the best, I just think I wish him the best from afar. Based on Entertainment Weekly, Survivor, Jeff Probst reacts strongly to Jeff Arner outing Zeke as transgender. Each week host Jeff Probst will answer a few questions about the most recent episode of Survivor, Game Changers. This week, he gives his on-the-scene and behind-the-scenes insight and reaction to Jeff Varner outing Zeke Smith as transgender. Entertainment Weekly, OK, so clearly a lot to unpack here with Jeff Varner outing Zeke as trans on national television. Let us start with your initial reaction when Jeff said that at Tribal Council. Jeff Probst, I am pretty sure my reaction was the same as viewers watching at home. I saw Jeff Varner turn to Zeke and make what was essentially a statement vaguely disguised as a question, why haven't you told anyone here you read transgender? On one hand, it was such a tiny moment so simple and quiet that I wasn't certain I heard what I heard. My brain had to rewind and play it back. And if you watch the reaction at Tribal, Zeke's tribe mates seemed to go through the same moment. They heard it, but had to process it, and then once it landed they responded quite vocally. And while they were sharing their feelings with Varner, I was still running it in my head. 
this just happened. It seems everyone on the tribe Ty, Andrea, Ozzy, Debbie, Sarah had their moment of telling Jeff in very strong language that what he did was completely unacceptable. What did you make of what I would describe as their unified disgust at what had happened? In 34 seasons of Survivor, I have rarely, if ever, personally commented on what is said or done in the game. But this is a unique situation that falls outside the normal boundaries. I cannot imagine anyone thinking what was done to Zeke was okay on any level under any circumstances, and certainly not simply because there was a million dollars on the line. I think the response from the tribe, as it so often does, mirrors what the vast majority of society will feel. You just don't do that to someone. Witnessing that moment was so powerful because from my seat at Tribal, I could see it all. Barner was in the middle being attacked by angry tribe mates while Zeke sat in the corner outside of the action in what appeared to be a mild state of shock. It was one of the most surreal moments I've ever encountered on the show. From the outside, it looked and sounded like a regular tribal council, but in reality, it was one of the most raw and painful studies of human behavior that has ever happened on Survivor. Zeke was so composed in his response to what Jeff Varner did. How impressed were you with his reaction? We knew Zeke was a tremendous storyteller with an amazing ability to take a specific moment from the game or life and give it a universal perspective. That's why we asked him back to play a second time. And yet I was still blown away by how he handled the entire situation. It was as if he had been preparing for this absolutely unpredictable, completely public, and incredibly vulnerable moment for his entire life. His composure was astounding. And when he connected the entire event to the word metamorphosis, I distinctly remember thinking how in the world did you just do that? I was also very impressed with the compassion Zeke showed Varner. I wonder if some people will say he shouldn't he have hugged him or shouldn't he have forgiven him. But as a viewer to that moment, I found his ability to still find some level of humanity for someone who had just injured him so severely, may be his crowning moment. And there is another moment, that I hope was, as inspiring for others, as it was for me, and that was when Sarah told Zeke she was glad she got to know Zeke for who Zeke is, and would never see him any other way. That moment when a police officer, from a conservative Midwest background, without much exposure to the gay and lesbian and transgender world realized her own growth, her own metamorphosis, it completed the circle. This is how change and acceptance happens. When you spoke with Zeke before his first season, during the interview process, did the subject ever come up in terms of whether he planned to tell players he was trans, and how he would handle it if someone brought it up? My story with Zeke goes like this. I met Zeke in casting and loved him. I still have my original notes from that meeting. He was very engaging, gifted in his ability to manipulate with his words, and he wore this crazy Hawaiian shirt and had poofy hair. We knew we were doing millennials versus Gen X as a theme and we wanted him on the millennials tribe immediately. It wasn't he until after he left that I was told he was transgender. From that point forward we agreed that if his story was to be told, he would be the one to decide when, where, and how. As for someone else bringing it up, Zeke was fully aware someone might suspect it or bring it up and he said, I will deal with it as it arises. And I have to add it was never a question of Zeke being worried his story would come out. Zeke is a massive Survivor fan, and his point with us was very clear he wanted to be seen as a Survivor player. Not the first transgender Survivor player. I really respected that distinction and I understood it. The tribe was clearly all shaken by this incident. How were you after tribal council finished? I don't really remember a lot about my own feelings in the moments after tribal. 
I remember feeling that Zeke seemed very centered when he left tribal, despite what he had gone through and I believed his tribe mates would help him work through things back at camp. But we were in touch with the producer on the beach that night to just ensure everything was going okay. And then the other concern was Jeff Varner. Although I do not condone on any level what Varner did, I was still aware that he was without any of his support group of family and friends. He would be returning to Ponderosa, where voted out contestants go, after making one of the worst decisions of his life. Fortunately, we have a full-time psychologist on staff who knows all of the contestants and is there to help them through any of the many things that come up on Survivor. I think those sessions in the days after the event helped Varner, as he tried to make sense of everything. Have you spoken to Jeff Varner at all since this incident, and do you think he is genuinely mortified by what he did? I spoke with Varner the day after it happened, and I think he was still in a bit of shock. It was clear he was upset and the realization of it all was still washing over him. I do believe he wishes he could take the entire event back. I hope Varner is able to take this moment and turn it into something positive. People make mistakes. Granted this happens to be a pretty severe one, but as you saw even with Zeke, there is hope that something good can come from this. That would be my wish that Varner will seize this as an opportunity to be a catalyst for positive change, by owning his mistake, and moving forward in a new direction. Finally, we always take a sneak peek at what is coming up. I know we have a merge on the horizon. And I have to imagine the Nuku tribe will still be decompressing from what just happened. I am going to break tradition tonight, and let the events of this very special episode breathe for a moment, but Survivor will be back next week, and someone will be voted out. The game continues.